Hi everyone, Dr. Goyle here, here from uh, Peak Human Labs and today uh, I have my close friend Neeraj Jain here and we want to talk to you about testosterone. Uh, when is the right time to replace it? What are the things you should be considering if you are thinking about going on testosterone? Um, so yeah, <laughs> and you're the right person to kind of so, help me yeah, uh, with so, this conversation. So you know, we know about hormone replacement therapy for women, Yeah, but men also go through a similar um, change, I guess. Yeah, you know, we call that age. andropause. So okay. andro is androgens, like that's a type of class of uh, these molecules. And pause, yeah, pause. pause. <laughs> <laughs> Just like menopause, but it's for women, but it's... Although andro it's not really a pause, it's really a stop, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah for, for women it's, it's, it's a stop. But for men, it's, it's, it's not even a full pause because it, what happens for men, it's a, it's a decline. Uh, Whereas for women, they completely stop the production stops. of these hormones. But, you know, a man could father children into their 80s and 90s. Okay. There's really no reason... So, so I have a few questions. Yeah. Well, first of all, how? What are the impacts of of this? Like, like how would I know that my testosterone is declining? Yeah. So almost everybody is declining. There's no question. Okay. You are not the same as you were when you were 25, <laughs> and uh, it's unfortunately, but, but that's that's the reality. But some people just have, you know, they started with higher levels. So by the time they're 50, it's not that they're still fine. Right. But generally, if you start noticing you have like lack of motivation, you're more tired, you don't have that kind of oomph, like that thing to get up in the morning and right. attack the world, uh, that's testosterone. Oh. Uh, also, um, you find that you can't put on muscle as easily as you used to. You know, you're putting a little bit more fat around your belly than you used to do that. Okay. That's also, that's and, also less testosterone. And really, we're comparing to what it was like before. Right. Exactly. Like what you like were before. The rel not comparing to the general population no. or, or something. Yeah, everyone's a little different, but yeah, I think it's so, it's a comparison to yourself. So theoretically, hypothetically, let's let's assume <laughs> that I, I might yeah. be putting on a little bit this may be around this. here. Right. Let's just assume that it could happen. Uh, how? What would I do next? Would I get some kind of test to? to like yeah. How would I know that it's actually testosterone and not, and not just you know Dunkin' Donuts? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so basically you'd go to your doctor. Uh, again, everything here we suggest you go to your doctor. Uh, don't just act on my advice. Um, so get your go to your doctor and have a blood test done. And testosterone, the blood's a pretty good test. Normally done first thing in the morning because that's when the testosterone spike happens. Okay. So we normally tell you, go get your blood test done in the morning, fasting, um, and uh, and let's see what the levels are like, and you know you get a sense of where you're at, and and normally we look at free testosterone because that's the actual amount of testosterone that's available to the tissues. So there's total testosterone, and then there's free testosterone. So, so total includes what's in the tissues already. Uh, it includes a protein bound, oh, okay, um, testosterone that's not available for for use by cells. So we do recommend you get the free testosterone level, and that range is about you know, let's say 300 to 800 is kind of a concerted normal range, somewhere in there. So you mentioned earlier that, you know, some people may start higher, like just genetically mm -hmm. higher. Yeah. So then, you know, if I go to get a blood test, am I looking at the change in testosterone or am I just looking at the absolute amount? Well, we don't have your previous numbers, unfortunately. Like usually we won't have previous numbers okay. on a person. Like, you know, so if we, it'd be great if we had their number from 10 years ago. Right. But usually we don't. So we kind of just look at the number and we can see, okay, are you at the low end of normal? Are you below the range, which does right. happen as well. And generally what I see is people are at the low end of normal. Okay. Which means that they were likely, they were probably, again, at the higher end of normal right. before, which right. kind of makes sense. And then, again, it's very much a clinical, clinical decision where we look at the person, they tell us, hey, I'm feeling these symptoms. Uh, let's, we're going to have to, just, it's more like a trial. Okay. Let's let's consider doing a testosterone replacement and let's see what happens. Okay. And so the, the and what what is that? Like is that a pill or is it some Uh it's not a it, there used to be a pill formulation where uh you could take it testosterone orally but there seemed seem to be so much what we call first pass effect by the liver that would remove this testosterone mm -hmm. from your from your body. So uh the pill version doesn't work well but uh injections is generally what people like to do. Okay. So it's usually once or twice a week injections, and uh, otherwise it's topical, like a gel or a cream. Oh, sorry, why would anyone pick an injection over topical? <laughs> <laughs> you know I don't like needles. <laughs> yeah, so there are people like you who, who want to do topical <laughs> yeah. and gel like me. That too, I would potentially use that too. But but it's a daily thing. So okay. whereas, you know, that some people don't want to bother about something daily. Okay. You know, it's, you got to like... But is it more effective to do the injection or is it... No, I think it's generally okay. It's going to absorb, but... 
you know, when you're doing a topical, you don't exactly, you know, oh, it's harder to, the, the variation yes. in your dosage could happen. Okay. Whereas that won't happen in an injection. Right. Uh, and then, you know, when you do an injection, you have a, a, a big spike in testosterone levels for that day. And then it gradually levels off till your next injection. So I, my sense is people feel that. They feel oh. the testosterone rush. They kind of like that rush. Right. Whereas, uh, like, when you're doing a daily uh, yeah, yeah. cream, you're not feeling that. It's just like a slight baseline It's a more steady okay. improvement. So maybe it's more physiological. It's actually beneficial to do a daily. Like, it actually right. does make more sense to me. But people like the testosterone uh, injection. They're, they don't care about the needles. And, and how much research has been done on this? I know for women, there's been a considerable amount of research. But for men, like, are there, there must be side effects or some downsides to this. Uh, no, it's actually, uh, you know, the studies look pretty good. Uh, you know, I will, let's do that for ne next talk. We'll actually go through some studies where they looked at uh, what's the risk of heart disease for people who've had testosterone. It looks like they may have had decreased heart disease oh. for people who took testosterone. Um, but it doesn't seem to be any real concern. It, really, the, the issue is, is that it will, uh, when you take testosterone, it will suppress your own testosterone. Your own production. Your own production. So... Th you know, usually this is done in cycles, and sometimes after a cycle, what we call we do you know post cycle therapy. We give medications to stimulate your own testosterone. Now this may not matter to somebody who's in their fifties that's never going to have a kid again and is going to be on testosterone the rest of their life. It doesn't really matter. But if you're like in your forties or even potentially in your late thirties and you want you're taking testosterone, you don't want to necessarily mess up your own endogenous testosterone production. Right. right. So I think those are some of the concerns we have. The other issue is that everyone's uh, metabolism of testosterone is different. So some people convert to estrogen much more than others based okay. on their genetics. In those types of cases, they may have certain side effects from testosterone that other people won't have. So for example, like if, if you um, convert to estrogen a lot, you have a risk of getting gynecomastia, which is like, you know, just uh, some nipple breast development, breast bud development. And oh. you may see that on, on some guys. So we want to we want to be on top of that we don't want yeah that, <laughs> there's no guy that really wants that really. no and so it's we want to make sure we give estrogen blockers to make sure that we're preventing anything like that happening because once that happens you pretty much need to have a surgery oh, wow. to remove that and then the uh, apart from genetics the other aspect that that influences uh, testosterone to estrogen conversion is the amount of fat on your body so your fat cells c uh, contain an enzyme that, that basically promotes the conversion of testosterone estrogen. Oh, wow. So we have to, so in people who are over, have more uh, uh, fat on them or more ob obese, they're going to convert more to estrogen. That's why you see men who are o more overweight tend to have actually like right. breast development because they're converting oh. their testosterone estrogen. I thought estrogen. it was just the fat just getting stored there as yeah, well. It's, yeah, it's, so it's, it's actually also, an yeah, estrogen thing. Wow. It's, estrogen is, is there as well. So, um, so those are, those are the things. And then also people who like, let's say if they're worried about losing their hair, testosterone, if you're converting to DHT, you will have an increase in hair loss. Oh, so, so there you want, may want to take some things to like prevent that from happening. So there's a couple of little nuances. And if you have a risk of prostate cancer, right. And if you have any, you know, if you're the one who's converting to those toxic metabolites from DHT, then again, you'd want to take steps to prevent that. That those metabolites from sticking around and potentially causing prostate cancer. So, so certainly not something you need to discuss with your doctor. It's this not is innocuous. It's not like, yeah. hey, go to the pharmacy and I want testosterone. Right. No, like okay. I think that it is. It is a hormone. It has effects. You know, uh, you know there are things. People's personalities can change. Oh, wow. They can become depressed. They can have road rage or they can have rage. Wow. So you know, if, again, people taking too much, it's a concern as well. You know, I've seen it happen. So. It's, it has, it's a complex situation, but definitely, uh, you know, worthwhile for a lot of people because just like, you know, women not living past men menopause, I mean, I think now, now things have changed. Same, men are living a long time and, right. you know, why should you have, like, you know, substandard hormones? Right. You know, why should you accept that? Because you're in the gym all the time working out and all this. And if you can't get, you know, the results you want because you don't have the same hormone levels, it's, right. it's a different. The other thing I forgot to mention is libido. So testosterone will have an impact on libido as well. Positive. A positive impact. Um, you know, that's why people have the morning erection. 
because testosterone it's spikes in the morning. Spike, right. Uh, and so that that's a concern. So if you're noticing you don't have the morning erection, then then that's maybe you need testosterone. It may also be a blood flow issue as well. But um, but those are those would be the signs. So uh, again, if you take sometimes too much testosterone, you could actually ruin your. You could actually make your libido d decreased as well. So I mean, it's not it's not a complete. So yes, I mean, it sounds like something that you know men over fifty might want to consider. At least talk to their doctors about. Yeah. Um, and, and see if it's right for them. Yeah, exactly. I think there's a lot more we can talk about this, and, and maybe next time we'll talk about, you know, what are some natural ways to boost testosterone, what are, you know, some of the studies. Yeah, I'll, you know, well, let's do that. I'll bring up the studies next time, and then uh, also some of the supplements like Tonkat Ali and, and uh, you know, ashwagandha and these things that people are taking. You see a lot of, like, the... Um, uh, stuff in health food stores, testosterone boosters, or they, do they right. work? Do What's they the work? science behind them? Happy to talk about that next time. All right, perfect. All right, everyone. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed. If you like this uh, video, please subscribe on YouTube. Uh, send us comments. And also you can go to peakhuman.ca and uh, join our membership because this is a completely self-funded exercise and you could support us by doing that. Thank you very much. <laughs>